welcome back to Bow Truck Sailing. We are Pierre, Lisa, and our furry friend Tiller, sailing around the world in our Utremir 5X catamaran. Well, I'm doing this introduction from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We're in the way from Namibia to um, St. Helena's Island and on our way to Brazil. And I'm just starting to work on my Cape Town video. And honestly, I'm a bit overwhelmed. We were there for a month and a half. It was just a fabulous stop. Uh, I just adored Cape Town. We're gonna have to go back. And to make it very special, my friend Catherine, who's from South Africa, came and joined us there. So we, we did lots of really fun things. Um, we went on some tours. We went to see French Hawk, which is a, the wine area. It's kind of like being in Sonoma in California. Uh, we, of course, we did the things in Cape Town which, uh, typical people do, uh, seeing Robben Island. I read the book from Nelson Mandela, The Long Walk to Freedom, while he was in South Africa, so I really appreciated the history. And um, we also went on a safari, Sabi Sabi, near Cooper Park. So rather than trying to do a bunch of videos and show you a lot of the footage that I have, I'm just going to try to give a taste of what it was like to be in Cape Town. And uh, I'm going to save some of my beautiful pictures and things for maybe another more in-depth video on South Africa another day, maybe when I go back. In Cape Town, we stayed at the V&A Marina, which is in the heart of the V&A waterfront. A really nice mixed area with a working harbor where we could watch tugboats, see the dry dock. It was a really busy area at Christmas, but I always enjoyed my morning walk with the tiller. And there were a few people up and we could go and walk around the marina. And one highlight of tiller's day was always to look at the seals that were lounging on the seal platform or even on some of the docks where the boats were located. It was fun to watch the antics of the seal and this guy climbing on the dock had been kicked off several times and he was ready for a fight. Then a big guy got involved and pushed him in for disturbing his sleep. On the weekends, the market was a fabulous place to buy fresh produce and also to grab a bite to eat. It was a short walk from the marina and we always came back with a few really interesting things. Catherine, our friend from Boston who had joined us in for a couple months in Indonesia, was home for Christmas in Cape Town and she took care of Tiller and stayed on Biotrek while we took a trip over Christmas, flew to Skuza, which is in the Kruger National Park and then drove to Sabi Sabi, which is a game reserve just beside Kruger Park, with no fences so that animals run freely between the two parks. We traveled there with pump three and two canoes, and we had an absolutely fabulous time. I'll just show you a few highlights here, and stay to the end of the video if you want to see the full set of pictures of Sabi Sabi. Our days were starting with a safari in the early morning, we went out in an open safari vehicle with our ranger Aaron and with our tracker Les. Very experienced in finding animals and we saw all of the big five and we saw so much more. Just an amazing experience. So do you see it? Yeah. I've seen lion tracks. We were lucky to see lions several times. Well, not exactly lucky, but excellent tracking by Les and Aaron. Just go around. They've stopped on that side, so we're just going to go around to them. Check out that pose, it's just like Tiller. We saw all the big five, which are named for the five most dangerous animals to hunt on foot. Of course, the only hunting we did was with our cameras. One of the big five are the Ranos, and we learned that at Sabi Sabi and in Cougar Park, they are mutilated to save their life. 
If you look closely, sadly, they're all missing their horns. At Savvy Savvy, they remove the rhino's horn, a drastic measure to protect these magnificent creatures from the lethal threat of poachers. Poachers are driven by the lucrative black market to kill rhinos for their horns, which are mistakenly believed to have medicinal properties. At the Savvy Sands Park, which is adjacent to the Kruger Park, poachers were killing about one rhino per week. In the three years since the park has been removing the horns, there's been almost no poaching. Their horn, once a symbol of wild beauty, now represents a tragic vulnerability. The act of removing it is a stark reminder of the realities of wildlife protection in African parks. And our evening safaris always ended with a cocktail, just as the sun was setting. We were in Sabi Sabi over Christmas and we had a secret Santa champagne breakfast. The dinner was gorgeous and just very special. We heard lions roaring in the background. For more on the wildlife in Sabi Sabi, please stay to the end of the video. We flew to Cape Town for New Year's and then we drove to Franchock. Thanks to Catherine's cousins, Barbara and Richard, for taking care of Tiller when we were gone. Team Biotrek drove with Catherine in a small car and Plum 3 in two canoes and a driver to drive them to Franchuk. We stopped in Spear where there was a zoo and lots of wild birds of prey. But there was no time for wine tasting because we were late to get up to Ekhop. The next day we wanted to squeeze in some sparkling wine tasting at Lelude, so we all squeezed into Catherine's Mini so that we'd be on time for the wine train later that morning. Firmness that I'm oh, feeling is not here. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Oh, you are very welcome. <laughs> and that was before having champagne. Oh, yeah. Nice thing about traveling with Catherine is that we didn't try to hit all the vineyards. She knew the very best ones, and so we went to the ones that were very special, ones that had art displays or ones that had exceptionally good wine. Afterwards, some shopping and relaxing in the pool that was outside our room. A trip to Robben Island where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 28 years it's an absolute must. You take a ferry to the island and then a tour bus around the island, which is like a little town because of all the homes for the prison guards in the times past. The ride was really funny. She was uh, really very informative as well, especially for the international crowd on the bus. And here she is. Hey, let's fly to Europe. People from Holland, I hope that you didn't come here to colonize us again. <laughs> Canada. Before Mr. Mandela died, you gave him a citizenship, a Canadian citizenship. Oh, thank you for that. It's again, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you for what you did in South Africa during the dark days. When our brothers and sisters fled this country, you exiled them, educated them. Then you're also pumping your money to a liberation movement. And afterwards, we get out of the bus and we visit some of the prisons, and it's an old prisoner who gives us the tour. It was our kitchen. 
and I also worked in that kitchen for quite some time. And that kitchen was our headquarters around here. To learn more about South African history, I would urge you all to read Nelson Mandela's book, The Long Walk to Freedom. It's a page turner. Even in the prison, there was discrimination based on color of the skin, with blacks receiving less food. During the ferry ride back, just a beautiful view of Table Mountain. Cape Town is such a beautiful city when you enter the harbour by boat. It's the view from the top of Table Mountain and you can see Robin Island. We visited Table Mountain several times. Once when we went to the top by cable car, another time to climb it, and then we did a tour with the rally that was organized to visit the tunnels that had been built during World War II. We're going out this way. We should be. <laughs> In the V&A Marina, we always like watching the antics of the seals, but one time we noticed there was a seal that had a rope around its neck, it was strangling it. They're trying to call them. Catherine called the SPCA, but they weren't able to come right away. I know, but think about it. Imagine how painful it is. Pierre tried to approach it to rescue it with some scissors in hand, but it looked like it was going to be just too dangerous. Yeah, I think you need to cover its mouth. Tiller was worried too. Eventually, much later, the SPCA did show up and were able to get the rope off the neck of that seal. And then we could see it later on the dock with a wound around its neck. At least it was now free. Back in Cape Town, a little bit more work on the boat. Jean-Marie arrived, who would be our crew from Cape Town to Namibia, and we described what needed to be done before we would depart. Well, we're just getting ready to leave. I was just recording that we just put the main, the, the Royal We put the mainsail up. Ilman Sells was here helping Pierre, although he uh, kind of organizes it. And uh, we have the Genoa to do when there's no wind. If the wind drops tonight, the three of us just might do it. Because yeah. that yeah, would be the best time. Take advantage of the wind. And then we're supposed to do uh, some uh, diesel filling tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. So we have to move the boat for that. And uh, then we can leave whenever, except for yeah. I need to buy the, the fresh food. Come back. Full of hours of work. Oh, oh yeah, you have to put all the like briefing lines and everything. Jour sur vos travaux, sur tout ce que vous allez faire. <laughs> ouais. yeah, je vais mettre à jour très rapidement. After having the mainsail repaired and putting it back up, there was still lots of rigging to be done. Pierre helped two canoes replace their ropes for their dagger boards. And also, I forgot to mention that Pierre had to dive in the marina, and that was just before we left for Sabi Sabi. He had to fix a broken prop. And despite all the protections of wearing earplugs and jumping in the shower right after, uh, once he was sick for a day. Then it was time to leave for Namibia, and we left in the very early morning. By Cape Town. The bridge is opening for us. DNA. Look how pretty it is. Get out of the way, little buddies. There's turning for them. Rob
Robin Island. We'll continue our trip in our next episode. And for now, here's some extra content on some of the animals that we saw in Sabu Sabu. fungus so they grow mushrooms that's how they break down their food so they collect wood they sprinkle it on the mushrooms the mushrooms digest it and then they eat the mushrooms so that is how they produce food but as you can imagine breaking down all of that the mushrooms they get very hot and they produce a lot of co2 so these are the chimneys there's a single um, single circular chimney that goes from the bottom all the way up and this is just built around it and then there's little holes everywhere in this area. There will be small holes uh -huh. that sucks in the air and creates this convex. Yes. The air. Yes. 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 You can see the female attached to it and then the male does all the hard work. Good, I'm